Welcome to the Podcast Rodeo Show. I'm your host, Dave Jackson, from the School of Podcasting.com. This is where we grab a random podcast and see how long we can hang on. And today, we are looking at modern Persian food. You can find it at modern, easy for me to say, modernpersianfood.com. Their description from our good friends at Apple Podcast reads, Podcast co-hosts and food bloggers... Bita Arabian, and I'm going to butcher these names. My ladies, I, I apologize. And Bita Nazem Kelly share the rich flavors and fresh ingredients of Persian cooking and how to incorporate them into today's modern lifestyles. The duo introduces the flavors, tastes, and techniques they use, and also their cultural stories and perspectives growing up in the U.S. in Persian families. So... We're going to be listening to episode 34 in just a minute, but first, we have to remind ourselves... The following is an opinion, and only an opinion. These are actual, honest first impressions. If you don't like the opinion, feel free to never listen again. And it goes a little something like this. And the voice sober starts right now. Hi, and welcome to the Modern Persian Food Podcast. We are food bloggers, Bita Arabian and Bita Nazim Kelly. And we're here to share with you the rich flavors and fresh ingredients of Persian cooking and how to incorporate them into today's modern lifestyles. We're excited to introduce you to the flavors, tastes and techniques we use and also our own cultural stories and perspectives growing up in the U.S. in a Persian family. Thank you for joining us. Today, we are recording episode number 34, talking about Persian ice cream. Delicious, mouth-watering, great on a hot day ice cream, and specifically a traditional Persian ice cream. In Farsi, we call ice cream best. Are you sharing a microphone or what's with the... Well, as you're talking... Ice cream bastani, and this traditional ice cream is also sometimes known as Akbar Mashti. I'm joined today by the lovely Beat. The only thing that I've noticed right now, you are obviously reading this off of a piece of paper, and you're trying to sound like you're happy and okay. Bita. Hi, Bita. Hi, Bita Jun. How are you? Doing well, thank you. So we're talking about ice cream. Yeah. What can you tell us about Bastani? Yeah, Bastani. Bastani is such a Persian treat. It has those familiar Persian flavors of saffron and rose water in a cold, delicious treat. Like you said, on a hot day, that sounds delicious. Or after a great meal, or just at the end of the day, just sneaking a little bowl of Bastani. And what's really special about Persian ice cream as well is that it has frozen chunks of cream mixed in and a lot of times pistachios in there as well. And again, like the rose water and the saffron really make it Persian and it's super delicious. Have you ever made Persian ice cream? Just in a cheat type of way. I don't have an ice cream maker. However, you can just take a tub of vanilla ice cream and, you know, let it soften a little bit so you can stir it. Uh Yeah, so... And you can hear she's actually now talking now. She does have that thing where a lot of her sentences end as a question, but that's just the way some people talk. Yeah, so we've just cheated and made our own version by adding the flavors in. Just a touch of rose water, as well as definitely saffron, some shelled chopped pistachios. And sometimes we'll take some heavy whipping cream, just basically some thick, heavy cream, Mm -hmm. to make it seem a little bit more like the traditional ice cream. You can freeze the cream, sort of like in a freezer bag, and freeze it, and then break it up, and then stir in the cream. So traditionally... Traditional Persian Bassani has, like you said, like the chunks of cream in it. Yeah. That makes it really delicious. Do okay, you have- for me right now, I'm ready to start talking about how to make it. We've got the history of ice cream, but I hear she's asking her a question, so we'll see where we're going. Do you have an ice cream maker? I don't have an ice cream maker, but you know, something to note about the Persian ice cream, it's really rich when we are trying to to find the ice cream that we're going to buy. We always love to get ice cream that has eggs in it. So it's like really kind of custardy and really delicious and extra rich. And Okay. So now you've got my attention because we're talking ice cream, but we're talking with eggs 
and frozen cream. So this is not your grandpa's ice cream. Rich and Persian ice cream is definitely like that. So if you are going to do the cheap version, I just recommend using like a really high quality ice cream. I don't have an ice cream maker. I've never actually made Bastani from scratch, but there's definitely a bunch of recipes available using good quality milk and cream, eggs, and then again the rose water and the saffron and pistachios. And some recipes include some vanilla in there as well. But the cheat recipe, you know, it just makes it a little bit more accessible. Like if you can't get to a Persian market or you don't go to a restaurant that has that ice cream that you can kind of make that at home. I actually love the Persian ice cream in like a little ice cream sandwich. So traditionally when they would have the ice cream sandwich, Persian style is like with two thin wafers. So it's not like really thick, but it's very delicate and it's like a beautiful presentation and it's individual and it's super delicious. In some of the Persian markets in the freezer section, they have individually wrapped ice cream sandwiches. Have you seen those before? Yes, I grab them whenever I see them. I love them as well. What I really like about the Persian ice cream sandwiches is that the wafer, as you mentioned, it's really thin. It's also not sweet. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's plain. I appreciate that because you can- Well, we're totally like blowing the Persian ice cream is nothing like I guess I'm going to call American ice cream. So this is, it's educational. You still got me. You get the crunch and the texture of the wafer, but it doesn't take away from the flavor of the ice cream. Mm -hmm. I just don't love like overly sweet desserts. To me, it's overpowering to have like a really sugary cone and then a really sugary ice cream and then like a really sugary topping. But this way, it's just still about the ice cream, but then you just get that nice light crunch. I love those. Yes. Yeah, it balances it out. Okay, so where are we going after this? Because I'm ready for like, here's how you make the ice cream. Balances it out. It's delicious. Have you ever stacked and made your own little ice cream sandwiches at home? Yeah. See, wouldn't these be good questions to ask? It's like you're interviewing each other. Like, why not figure out what each of you know and then talk about what you know, as opposed to, have you ever made ice cream from scratch? Nope, don't have an ice cream maker. Have you ever eaten this kind of thing? Nope, never have. Okay, well, if you know where you shouldn't go, then you can just go to the important part. So let's see how she answers another no question. Yeah, I've done that. And I've actually, for a party, have done like a platter of ice cream sandwiches. And that's always like a fun way. And you can kind of put additional pistachios like around the sides of the ice cream sandwich to just like amp it up a little bit. Tell me more about that. That sounds like it would be really nice, you know, with summer around the corner and more outdoor you know, hopefully parties happening. So do you assemble your Persian ice cream sandwich in advance and put it in the freezer or do you do it right before you serve it? So the problem of doing it right before you serve it is that it actually takes a while, especially if you have to like scoop the ice cream individually and make the little sandwiches. It can just take too long. I don't necessarily, if I'm entertaining, want to be like assembling ice cream sandwiches while, you know, everyone's waiting. And especially if you're making more than just a few of them, the first ones will start to melt off. So you can actually assemble them in advance and then put it in like on a tray in the freezer and then when it comes out pass it around i love that idea and then where do you find and if you think about it that last answer could have gone after you've made the ice cream hey now that you've made the ice cream do you want to make an ice cream sandwich well here's a tip because i'm kind of like are we ever going to talk about how to make the ice cream we're five minutes in yeah and then where do you find the wafers there's wafers that you can get from like a specialty grocery store that basically like a very plain flat cracker wafer very clever a what cracker hold on that basically like a very plain flat cracker wafer very clever, flat cracker. Clever okay. and creative and then you just take it you assemble it and you roll the ice cream mm-hmm. edge into the pistachio yeah or you could kind of use your hands to help kind of like pat it onto there yeah and it yeah. probably looks really lovely too the presentation it makes me want to have a party right now Aww, yeah especially as the weather's getting warmer there's another kind of persian ice cream actually it's more of a sorbet falude mm-hmm. that Okay, so more education. All right. That actually has rose water as well, but with like vermicelli noodles and it's like a frozen treat. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people like to enjoy that with lime and sometimes some Persian cherry syrup. I usually have only really seen those at like restaurants or I think you could get like a little tub of it from the Persian market as well. Yeah, you can. Falude is definitely heavier in rose water flavor. Mm -hmm. And see, I would have taken that little chunk and put it before the ice cream sandwich talk like, hey, Here's one ice cream. 
Here's another one with a little more rose water. And in restaurants, you can order half ice cream, half faloudin, and they call that makhlout, I believe. Mm -hmm. And that's the word for mixed. So you have like a mix of a little bit of ice cream, a mix of the frozen noodle rose water delight. Yeah, those are all delicious. And then there's also another treat that I know some people are kind of like fanatic about it. Ob Havij Bastani. Have you had that before? No, but on my mom's most recent... You guys ask a lot of no questions, but okay. ...recent trip back to Iran, she got to go sort of as a tourist and go to all the beautiful places. And, you know, I lived vicariously through her food pictures Aww. and scenery pictures, but mm -hmm. there was almost always a beautiful carrot ice cream float. I'm not sure what the Farsi name of it was, like a carrot ice cream float on the table. Uh -huh. And I would ask them, what is that? And it often was beautiful and in a tall glass, like a float. Yeah. I have not tried it, but it seemed to be really popular. Op Havish Bastani, it's just like a float. So, you know, I think Western culture is more familiar with like root beer floats or even like Coke floats, right. but it's just basically the ice cream. So typically the Persian ice cream is used, but vanilla ice cream would be a great substitute if you don't want to use the Persian ice cream and have a few scoops of it in a nice tall glass and then serve it with carrot juice juice you know i'm a huge carrot juice fan so people love this flow and it kind of really reminds them of summertime and actually being in iran so like i said if you want to use the vanilla ice cream instead there are people who don't really like rose water so if you don't want to use rose water you can just use vanilla ice cream and kind of get like that little persian experience with this fun treat definitely i think it's the saffron that is the biggest flavor note in persian ice cream so mm -hmm. you could skip the rose water if you're not a rose water fan easily good point for people who don't like rose water i know some people i'm close to don't always love rose water so yeah, we, here's an alternative is that you can actually have vanilla ice cream and garnish. i did not hit rewind on this by the way you're just saying the same thing twice and garnish it with pomegranate molasses oh so drizzle pomegranate molasses on top of the ice cream and put some chopped pistachios on top and you have a little persian inspired mm. dessert that's really, really <laughs> clever. You could even put some pomegranate arils on top. Yeah. And if you don't have pomegranate molasses, I actually have some date syrup yeah. sitting around that I picked up. That mm -hmm. might be interesting with some walnuts. I'm trying to figure yeah. out what I'm going to give this Ooh, that's show. That's a good idea. So I don't have an ice cream maker, but I did recently get gifted with my very first Vitamix. So I've been making my own healthy version of ice cream, basically with a base of bananas. So if you could take a frozen banana... <laughs> Yeah, I, I was going to give you the old, <laughs> but the longer this goes, the more, and, and the good news is none of this is bad. So at the very beginning of the show, and this is me listening through the picky ears of a podcaster. So the average listener is not going to notice this, but there's a thing called a noise gate and a little can sound great, a little too much. And it's noticeable that what it is, a noise gate means that when I don't talk, it takes any hiss or any cars in the background and squishes them so you can't hear them. So the only time you hear me is when I talk. And the problem is if you have a fair amount of noise, it then makes it obvious that you're taking the noise out, which I know sounds kind of like, yeah, but isn't that what I'm trying to do? Not if it makes it noticeable that all of a sudden there was noise and now there's not. And then there's noise and then there's not. So that was one thing that I'm like, you know, I, I heard some cars in the background and things like that. I'm going to guess that one of the hosts, and it's interesting because it's Bita and Bita. And so one is B-I-T-A, one is B-E-A-T-A, -E and I, I'm probably still butchering that name. Um, one of them has, I'm going to guess, a Blue Yeti because it's not horrible. It's a, actually a pretty decent sounding Blue Yeti, but there is a fair amount, a, a fair, by that I mean a four to five, not a seven to eight, four to five, a little bit of, of, of background noise. So I heard the cars and stuff, but for the record, nah, but... Just make sure you're using your Blue Yeti correctly if you are using one. So my whole thing that needs that that I would do with this is a little more planning up front, just a little bit. Hey, have you ever used this? Huh? -uh. Okay. Well, then I'll just talk about it. Hey, do you have an ice cream maker? No. Okay. I'm gonna talk about this because I can. I have an ice cream maker. Figure out who's gonna cover what. So you don't have a lot of this, hey, do you have a thing? Okay, well, that's, uh, hey, well, that's, that's all right. I love this. It's really good. Do you have a thing? No. Okay, well, it's, it's just kind of know where you're going to go. And the beginning 
when you're talking about the show is see, I don't know how to say this. It's like you're reading it and it just sounds like you're reading it. Now, the good news is you're reading it in a very happy kind of way, but it definitely sounds like you're reading it from a piece of paper. So do that a couple more times, a little practice on that. Again, these were little itty bitty things. So all in all, I think number one, you have a very niche show, modern Persian food. So I know exactly what's going on. I, I You had me I was like, ooh, uh, frozen chunks of cream, um, all sorts of fun stuff like that. But I was really ready to like, how do I make this? Because isn't that what people are tuning in for? Maybe I'm wrong on that. Uh, but I, I'm like, if if I'm here because I want to make some Persian ice cream, can we get to that? And then, you know, later you can say, now that you have some ice cream, here's how you can make ice cream sandwiches. And here's how you can do this. And here's how you can do that. But if the goal of the audience is I want to hear about this and then make it, it's like I don't need the history of Rome to figure out how to make ice cream. It's like let's just get to the put this in a blender, throw in some this and that and a little more rose water and blah, 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 and go from there. But, uh, you know, your audio was was pretty decent. The intro was okay. I, I was kind of expecting the voiceover person to come in, but uh, – that was not a big deal at all. So all in all, like I said, just a, I think a little planning up front would just make this go a little smoother. And I, you both have a decent, uh, uh, what's the word? Um, chemistry. You know, I love that you keep going, Ooh, ah, and, and I can tell that you actually authentically love this food. So that came through as well. Uh, I thought that was kind of fun. So, uh, you know, like I said, nothing major here to fix. And your website has uh, some sort of dish on the front that like, that's something I, you don't see at McDonald's. So that's kind of cool. But if you would like to be featured right here on the podcast rodeo show, go over to the website podcast rodeo show.com. And you'll see where there's a button right at the top. that says, get reviewed. Also, if you're listening on a podcasting 2.0 app, you can also now listen to the podcast rodeo show on those kind of apps. And if you feel like giving me a boost, by all means, give me a boost. But uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Dave Jackson from the school of podcasting.com. Thanks for joining me on my mission to rid the world of boring podcasts. Take care.